Good morning, happy Friday to you. I'll be starting in a few minutes. 56 minutes after the hour. We've been messing with the uh, Cirrus SR22 today, Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Hope you're having a great Friday. Getting my desk all situated here. I think I've mostly worked out all the dang uh, joystick problems I was having yesterday. Couldn't activate the flaps. That flap button was completely messed up. Um, tried a little WD-40 on the thing. Seems to be working right again. Last minute, grab a little bit of coffee here. Probably a good idea to clean out my community folder and reinstall everything that's in there. That could be part of the problem I've been having. Simon and Garfunkel run the Yacht Rock, the Yacht Channel on Pretzel today. All right, top of the hour. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Can you see episode 90 of Sky Dude? Today we're going to be looking at the Cirrus SR22 if you'd like to fly along. I think we're going to give it a new name, Mighty Mouse. Such a small little plane, but huge power. We'll be starting from my home airport today, KFLY, K-F-L-Y. And I'm going to go ahead and start cold and dark over here in this runway. Ramp 1, parking. Set that as our departure. 
Friday is usually uh, on Twitter anyway. Uh, I enjoy Twitter quite a lot. <clears throat> and Friday, <clears throat> when Twitter started, it used to be a much friendlier place. <laughs> we, we, we all we all hate each other now, and it's a big war zone over there. Uh, but when Twitter started, we were such nice people. And on Fridays, it was Follower Friday hashtag FF. And what you did is you you would post hashtag FF, and you would post all the lovely people that you follow that you think that other people should follow. And so. Uh, Eventually, it turned into, um, well, it, either way, Friday is a follower appreciation day. So thank you to all the likes and subscribes that I have been, that you have bequeathed upon me and are bequeathing upon me, and I really appreciate it. You know, I know I'm not the, the top dog out there, but I am I am learning and I'm trying, and I've been putting my dues in. If you look over uh, my channel with regards to flight simulation stuff, I have been trying to pay my dues and put in the time uh, so that uh, people will want to fly with me, I guess. Either way, I, uh, I love it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being uh, a follower. Thank you to everybody who follows me on uh, on Twitter as well. I'm not advertising this flight today. I should, but um, everybody's just so mad at each other over there right now. So uh, just kind of laying low. You know, let me spawn in cold and dark here at KFly in the Cirrus SR22. A lot of people really, really love this plane. They're like, I can't believe you haven't been flying this thing. Well, you know, I figured in the real world, if I go to learn this stuff in the real world, they're going to stick me in a Cessna. They're not going to stick me in a Cirrus. So I spent most of my early time just practicing the planes that, you know, that would. Chances are I would be flying. I pretty much stuck with the 172, uh, the longest. And I, you know, I tried them all out. But anyway, this is the new uh, and improved model that they gave us the other day. And she is a beaut. She really is. The Syria, the Cirrus jet and the Cirrus, this, this thing, they're really beautiful to look at. Some of the things that I like on here in this console that don't, don't work... But a place for you to plug in your, uh, looks like we, we have a port for our phone and our music so we can do an aux, right? So that we can play our own music while we're flying along. You even got your little phone music button for the co-pilot over here. Uh, but it's nice. We've got an aux jack. What we're missing here, we're missing some USB ports, right? Where, where are the USB ports? To, to charge our stuff, and I'm sure that they have them now. I mean, most most automobiles uh, have them now. All right, let's get this baby fired up. Get back on the uh, the yacht rock. All right. So I checked out the airspeed operations and it went in one eye and out the other. Uh, so I'll do my best. The information is here. Do to do to do. Turning on our battery.
probe. Mixture. Okay. Now, I was messing with this a little bit earlier. Uh, in Colorado, we're up so high that you really never want to start rich, full and rich, right? So this is usually when you're starting at sea level, right? But here, we're up so high that the proper mixture is, it's a good, uh, just a good place to eyeball it at like 60, 65%, somewhere in here. Here's cut off. That'd be about 50 about 60 now when we get in the air though we're gonna mess with this and see what happens you know where's the cutoff point and in a normal propeller plane you can find that spot by watching your rpms and we'll do that here in a moment show you how to do that let's now check and make sure our darn flaps are working this is what started the whole problem last night i couldn't get my flaps to work so on top of there being a joystick problem, and again, I applied a little TLC to the joystick to try to get things working right again. There was some strange configuration bug going on in my controls. Although it listed the controls, for example, here's, here's the perfect example. When I would go to, do, 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 when I would go to, come on. When I would go to external view here, the drone view, even though the button is set right, when I press it, it takes me out to drone view. When I pressed it again, it wouldn't take me back to the cockpit. Right? That's what it's supposed to do when you press it a second time. But it was leaving me locked out here. Home was working just fine. But anyway, so I noticed that for whatever reason, the right information was there. There was no duplicate th the keys being assigned to it. And what I had to do is just go in and clear everything out and then reestablish everything. Same with the uh, the drone. Is I, I cleared it out, I validated it, and then I reset it to the insert button or whatever button you're using or whatever button I'm using. And then it just works fine again. So honestly, I, I, I don't know the reason for that. Maybe just changing things too much, something in cash, I don't know. A lot of different ideas were thrown at me yesterday, but it seems to be working again. All right. Fuel pump. They want that on boost. But a tiny bit of power. Avionics. There's the alt. I was looking for that. Turn these on. And that's our second screen over here. Good, that's on. Amp meter. So please just keep your cool. He wants to keep you on a chain. You look so calm, but I can see the strain. We gotta move fast. All right, let's try to turn this baby on. Actually, you know, let me see if it'll just turn back off using the key. Good. That's nice.
right about the pal. You gonna move out of the way? All right. Normally hitting this first PDF button over here, but well, it does. And if you keep clicking it, it'll take you to your menu, but it doesn't in this case. Right, so then they transfer controls, the inner control, and most of the controls right down here. Let's see if I got it here. Okay, so controlling this, this secondary screen over here, you're gonna end up using these. Some of these you might have to push to get into menus, but right now to get it to move beyond the checklist, the emergency procedure checklist. Right, go ahead and hit enter down here. Then hit enter again, and it'll take you through them, check them off. You can go to your next checklist. More information, best glider landing speed, check. Mixture, so these are emergency procedures for on takeoff, things you should do. Go ahead and enter through these. Emergency procedures in flight. Emergency descent procedures, best glide speed 92 knots. Maximum glide speed. All right, you don't have to do this. What I'm showing you, I mean, this is what you're going to get, but you don't have to do this. I'm just going through and clicking check on all these. See how many damn checklists they actually give us. Emergency procedures. Engine partial power loss. Imagine uh, trying to look through all these. You're going to need a co-pilot for sure. Oh, I'm having problems. Cool they have them, though. Oh my God, there's a lot of them. Inadvertent spin entry. They're like, here, read the entire book. Read the entire... Caps deployments. All right, checklist finished. Wow. Okay, so now you can, let's see what happens. We go to hit the home button here. There we go. That's what we're kind of looking for. Um, other things that we're used to, let's say you want to do a flight plan or well, let's hit menu. Then you will give you your map settings, and which I've already set to north up. Your map may not look like mine, it might be in a different position. Flight planning. Go ahead and clear that. Flight planning. Comes up with what we're used to. There is no place to use your keyboard as far as I'm I understand. Right? Let's say we were setting up a flight plan between here and Denver. Okay, so I need to get into this menu. So push this, see what happens. No, but if you push this, that's what we're used to. We used to little push buttons over here in the Cessna. Same thing. Now if we rotate the knob, usually the outer knob will move us up and down in the menu, which it is doing. Hey, good morning, Henny. I think most of my problems are fixed. Long story, we had joystick problems and we had, and just went through all the different checklists. Well, just quickly went through them. And now I'm at the, uh, showing how to use the autopilot here or the GPS. So with this knob, you can get into and out of the menus by pressing it. And then using the outer knob again to move up and down or over. Let's clear that. Using the outer knob again to go up and down. And then using the inner knob, right? You have to use it in old school fashion. There, again, there's no way to type this in. You rotate it, the inner knob, right? Oh, you need to be in the next line, that line. Now rotate. Aha, you can use your keyboard, or keyboard right here once you're on this screen. So if I put in K-Fly, And then enter down here on this console. 
and then enter again. There, now we have K fly as our uh, departure. Use the outer wheel, roll down to destination, go to this one, use the upper wheel, and now we're going to type in K den. And then on this console again, enter, 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 enter. So now we have K fly and K den in there. Uh, no, I, I don't know that I'm going to be doing, I don't know about DCS at the moment. Yeah, the emergency checklists are, are quite nice. Okay, so that's the, the very, very, very basic on the GPS, how to just get a, set up a point to point. If you want to do in routes, right, or waypoints, basically, same thing. While you're still in there, use the up and down, go back to up to in route. Point. Let's see. Uh, let's say we were going to go out east first to HGO. HGO. Enter, enter. Yeah. So now it's going to take us way out east first and then up to Denver. Now, once we've got uh, your flight plan in there, you can clear it, hit clear, or back to menu. Okay. Let me get out of the menu. There we go. Now, if I go to procedures, there you can set up your approach and your arrivals. So again, they're just, they basically just moved all this information from the side of the, the GPS unit down to this console. Yeah, I would need to spend some time in DCS again to get familiar with that. All right, let's see here. We've got power disconnected, external, and we're ready to go. Uh, our autopilot stuff, might as well get some of that set at the moment. Right now, we are at zero elevation. So let's set an altitude. Again, I don't... I, I, I mean, it's cool, and I like the interior design. I don't... In a, in a, and if you were driving... Or flying this thing you can actually have your hand down there and keep your eye up here and rotate the knob but in the simulator I I have to see the knob and the screen at the same time all right so and then they put it so low it's really hard to keep both of these on the screen at the same time But I need to get my altitude select. So yeah, I would have put all these here or up here closer to where you're looking. I don't like buttons when they're so far apart. Okay, so let's get up to nine. Oh, hold on. Chris is calling in as, as she does. Hello, I'm streaming. Bye-bye. All right. Yeah, I'll do my best to go as fast as I can. Uh, where was I? I was at, now I'm at 10-1. Uh, Let me just put in 10-5. That makes sure that we clear everything around here, flying out east, 10-5, okay. Um, we're going to set... Ba -ba 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 -ba. The localizer set for HGO, I believe. No, let's see, press heading button here. 
Yeah, that doesn't look like the right nav. Let me open up Sky Vector here and get my VOR for HGO. It's 1125, not 1121. All right, so navigation. Do to do to do, which is up here. That's calm. Here's where's our nav over here. That's where. That's strange. We have calm now, uh, calm radio over here, but we don't have now where's nav switch over to nav one if that gives us anything up on the screen no we're still in calm Uh, do, 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 do. So yeah, that's interesting. Tom Nev just had a big altimeter change where is here's nav frequency on this side all right well we'll just go with it we need one one two one 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 two one Make it active. Great. So now that should be the proper. Click that heading button again and see what happens. Man, I'm probably a little too low to the ground at the moment. All right, but we're in good shape to go ahead and go. I think they wanted flaps in 50%. Good. You can see my flaps button is working again. Um, I've set the, the weather for gliding. Um, one of the big things they say is don't having don't have any pressure. Something to do with the pressure is a big deal with these uh when setting for gliding The next button I need to work on is my brakes. That one wants to stick too. It's probably time for a new joystick, but I'm so sentimental with this one. Now let's go back outside. We can see now flaps are actually in the proper position. Hello. Great. Let's change our camera speed. That was way too fast. That's one of the things too. I wish this thing would remember. It remembers everything else. This thing does not remember your 
these when you set these there needs to be a way to save these and that's gonna have to be a forum post but every single time you restart your simulator these goes these go back to default what that does is my translation with the drone now that was probably a bit too slow but that's still a little bit too fast Uh, let's tweak that just a tiny bit more so slow that one down but there and increase this one a little zippier not crazy Okay, let's increase the rotation just a little bit more. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I'll just fly around the airport. Yeah, all those controls are going to be probably to your on your right hand side under your wing uh, under your well, it's on your dash on your right hand side. But it's a real it's really hard to see sometimes. I don't appreciate any of the military jets except for the thirty five at the moment. Because where they place everything, and the the in the with your camera, it's unless you have custom cameras set, it's really hard to see. And unless you have all your buttons set. Okay, taking off from K Fly South, everything goes east. Doesn't matter if you're taking off, going the other direction. All planes from K Fly turn east and away from Colorado Springs. Mostly because it's a student training ground, and they're like, if you're going to crash, we want everybody flying out here, crashing out here. So it's a... Just a turn to the east. Okay, now I mentioned earlier our mixture. Uh, let me take my flaps off first. Gain some altitude so we can get that VOR. Over by Calhan. Yeah, I think we're picking it up now. Let me click on heading again. Damn these controls. So far away. Heading. No, I don't think we're picking up VR01 yet. It should be pointing east. So maybe we're, we got to get over that hill a little bit still. But let me get us at least going in the right direction and put on our autopilot here. So autopilot is down here in the console. Autopilot heading and we'll do an alt hold. Good hold. Uh, actually, let me do a flight level change. FLC. And let's see if that it, they keep us going. Yeah, up towards 10.5, where we can maybe catch that VOR. Okay. Uh, now, I was mentioning the the mixture, okay? In high altitudes, you never really start it at full rich, which it's usually about 50%. Now, what you need to do, again, this is kind of tough, because the mixture's down here, and your RPMs are here, and your exhaust temperature control is here. Okay, so what you need to do is slowly pull back on the mixture and usually until you get a sharp drop-off of RPMs. That's your 
basically your cutoff point. And then you put a little bit of mixture back in. Also, you're going to be watching for a significant decrease in your EGT. So let me come back over here, get the uh, the mixture control. Oh, so when I go to... Okay, so you see when I put it at 100%. Oh, we're getting 100% RPM. Okay. But as I lower it towards 50%, we don't see a sharp drop off in our... No, wrong button. Wrong thing. Come on. We're here. All right. So as I pull it down towards 50%, there's 90. We're still at 98% RPM. 97. 96. I'm lower than 50% now, and I still have 96%. 95. Okay. You're seeing it, you're seeing it wobble now back into the 80s. We're starting to get our drop there. 75, 70, 60. There, we're getting a sharp drop off. So, ideally, you just want to be... You, you want to be... Still closer to 100. Is, you know, you don't want to be down to the 70s. So you just kind of want to put it right in there. So now, as you see, I'm only using, like... I've only got the mixture, like, 30... 30%, 40%. Right, those little bits of extra RPM don't really matter to me. Uh, one moment, my speed is 130, 136 knots, and going faster. Once we get leveled out, we're still climbing. We'll be going much faster. Okay, so now that we're high enough, let's see if we can get that uh, BOR. That's not the right. The VOR. 1121 HGO. It's right there. It says 1121. It's east. But over here, so either we haven't picked it up or I've got it dialed wrong. But when you click your heading, it should center on it. And there's no heading up here for me to click to check. What I'll do though is I'll rotate my heading knob now here and see if the uh, the OBS changes. Uh, uh. That's actually changing my heading, and I don't want it. Well, we'll turn east. Where is the OBS knob then for this? Where do they put it? I want to be able to rotate this. Here's OBS. But how do you set it? Your course. Do they have assigned to it now? Do to do to do. Yeah, where is the OBS knob? Uh, we're doing one hundred and fifty two now. Do to do to do. do. Now that OBS is active, this work. Huh. So yes, we have to be able to turn this.
How strange. Where do they put the course knob? What, what, what? And there's got to be a way to move it unless they're figuring that <laughs> that you're not using the ORs anymore. But that doesn't make much sense at all. Here's course, com nav course transponder. But that has no effect on this. push or course center that didn't change Well, we need to find somebody that knows how to use that. I'll go ahead and just set it to at GPS at the moment, but I don't get it. See, that's what it should be doing. It should be facing this direction here. All right, so then we hit the nav button down there. Says we're still using a heading. This thing, see there? It says HDG. But it shouldn't be in heading anymore. Turn off the autopilot. Autopilot on. And nav. There we go. GPS heading. Not turning to be on it though. I don't know what is uh, up with the Garmin. It's like you almost have to establish it again. So if I go into direct, HGO's in there. I hit enter twice. Well, maybe it's because we're so close. Check the GPS. See what it does when it gets here. It should, uh, it should continue on, but we'll see. It didn't fly directly to Hugo when I told it to. Enter, enter. There it goes. All right, what speed are we doing? Got 95 RPM, our EGT. I'm surprised we didn't go lower than that. And we're turning towards Denver. We're doing 152 knots. All right, we can take a moment to look outside now. Yeah, Mighty Mouse, 152 knots. Again, I'm uh, 
Are we at Alcold? Yeah, we're at 10-5. Opened up. Make sure the flaps are up all the way. So it looks like she maxes out about 190. Either way, doing 152 in this small plane. You're usually struggling for 120s or more sometimes in the Cessna. So yeah, that's very nice. I still think all planes out in Colorado should come equipped with huge shock absorbers. Doesn't matter what plane you have because you never know where you have to put down. He's hard bodied. That one looks like it'd give a little bit. I would never put, I don't, I don't like the idea of hard. Hard body struts like that. I want this whole, these whole things to be Shock absorbers. This whole unit should be a giant shock absorber. Not just little ones in the wheel wells. And they should be able to also rotate. They have to. So I just finished uh, listening to an interesting article uh journalistic podcast article thing whatever and uh they were talking about how there's just such a dramatic drop off in the number of people out there that are flying these days that sounds like you no And he also pointed out what I pointed out that they've made they've turned it into a rich man's game. Right? Unless you have money, shh, you're not flying. Like I can only dream about it because again, it's just too expensive. Everything's too expensive. To get a basic caravan, which I was talking about yesterday, Americans are all fat now. We can't fly in these small little things. These are for your, for skinny people and Europeans. But not for Americans. Americans can't fly in this stuff anymore. We're just too big. So training in one, but even training in one, you're, you know, pushing maximum density. Uh, but a, a caravan starts at 5 million. That's stupid. A minivan doesn't start at 5 million. Well, yeah, it flies. It's, look, overall, the cost of the materials and the components on the inside nothing is so revolutionary in the world of of cars and airplane technology that there should be such a huge huge divide between what an automobile costs and an airplane costs sure you'd expect a little more because you are dealing with some precision instruments but cars these days have precision instruments they have gps they have lidar they have radar they have auto detection auto braking but a car isn't five million dollars so you see how they've completely rigged the system and even old planes are stupidly expensive even old planes that don't have all the fancy technology are just ridiculously expensive okay so that's part of the problem is going back to the days when the FAA was first created, the CAA and then the FAA, whatever. You know how government is. They'll come in and they'll impose their regulations on everything. And over the years, I mean, at the start, you kind of understood it because you had people in biplanes doing crazy wing walking and people flying off in the middle of the air and then buzzing towns. There were no rules. There needed to be some rules. But now it's such a, a leviathan. And I said earlier, I don't think they just in general don't want people flying.
Not until computers can complete, completely control everything. And maybe then, you know, over the next few years, we'll see a, a change. Looks like we've got some other activity up at uh, 1 or 2 o'clock. You see some uh, airliners over there, or other airplanes. Some people flying around here. Team up there. Either they're UFOs or there are other pilots flying around out here. They're sending flying around. He's in an F-18. All right, let's set up an arrival in Denver. Get back into our cockpit here. We're still a ways away, but we're gonna be coming up on it very fast. It's not that far. Okay, so we're gonna be using our procedures button here. See if we can contact Denver at this distance. There's so much air traffic control chatter, sometimes it's hard to get. It, it won't, you can't do anything in the menu until air traffic control is done talking. Dang you. Thing bounces around. Yeah, the ICAO is K D E N. I'm uh, trying to get a hold of them. I'm seeing if I can get a runway assigned. From this distance. closer to Colorado Springs than we are Denver. Well, we'll have to wait a minute, but basically in a nutshell, let's say we were setting up for one. Let's go ahead and come down here. We've got the procedure screen open. Select approach is set up. Let's scroll down to select arrival. Using this button here, <laughs> this knob, <clears throat> this knob, rotate down to arrival, enter, Actually, I don't want to use any of these. Let me go back out. Back out to procedures. Select approach. Yeah. We'll shoot for using the knob, rotate down ILS 35 right. ILS 35 right. That takes us to drum to Franz, runway 35. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter on that. And I'm going to use boss. Bronze. Let me rotate down. Let's see about using boss. Yeah, we'll use boss. Enter, enter. Enter, enter. Oh, gotta use the knob. Rotate down to activate or load. There we go, let's just activate it. Not approved for GPS guidance for monitoring only load uh, supported approach. Yes. Great. So now that we've got it in there, it's turning to go to the boss entry, the star. It'll take us to Dratz, Ditsy, Dory, Dean, Franz, and down to runway 35 right.
haven't quite figured out how to declutter this yet fully. All right, good shape. You're doing Mach 1 right now? Mach 2. We are doing 151 knots. Boy, dramatically improved from yesterday, huh? Yesterday was pea soup out here. Couldn't see a thing. And now look at clear skies. Not a cloud in the sky out here today. Yeah, you're, you're already in Denver. I'm not surprised. Yeah, you can do Denver in like seven minutes in that F-18. If, if not better time than that. It's amazing the power of the jet engine. Now, I know they make the, the little jets like the Cirrus jet, which is again, that'll do five, 400 knots. And look at how tiny those little jet engines are on that thing. Amazing the power that they can get. Another reason why I like this black skin in Colorado, the black and white skin here, or whatever it is, um, you can immediately tell when you're icing. The ice shows up so clearly on this frame. When I was first flying the Air Airbus 320, I didn't really, uh, when I didn't, I knew about icing, but I didn't know that it would affect, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it was because I had this skin on there, I was able to, to see that, oh my gosh, I'm icing. And that then uh, got me understanding the correlation between icing and this. If you're just flying along and you're not paying attention to your icing, and this right here is bouncing up and down like mad. Your speed is just going up and down and up and down and up and down. Or over here, your altitude, you're just fluctuating. You just bounce. It's like you're bouncing between points. That's usually the best indicator that you've got ice buildup going on. And this feature, this plane is nice. It's got anti-ice. Um, ice protection. So, another lovely feature to this plane. But again, something that come in, you know, for the most part, with the windshield, but something that could you could easily get on an automobile. Again, I don't understand why. I still don't understand, and it shouldn't be a group thing. It shouldn't matter us being grouped or not. It should show me the plane that you're in. I still... Do you have your settings right? So, under general options... Okay, under traffic... Okay name plates I could probably put on doesn't really matter but down here at the bottom AI and multiplayer traffic detail use generic aircraft models AI traffic I want that off use generic aircraft models for multiplayer 
I don't want generic aircraft models for multiplayer. I want to see what you're flying. So I have that off. Show multiplayer aircraft in close proximity on. Graphic variety. So, and it shows you as a bonanza. So in your controls, do you have these set on or off? Are these set on or off? Adjust if multiplayer traffic will only use generic or optimized aircraft models to reduce memory and CPU load. But even if yours is off, it should still show be showing you, showing me what you are using. minute and he's heading back this way he's he's over in Denver we're still heading towards our boss waypoint but he'll be coming from this direction most likely Beautiful. Now we're making our first turn onto our plan, our uh, arrival. Still showing you as an airliner. That's weird. I'll have to look into that. Because I have the F-18. I mean, we all have the F-18. There's runway 35 ahead. Get back in here and we need to be at 9,000 feet. So, uh, nine thousand. All right, do a flight level change. Normally, you can't descend until you pull back on the power. So let's see. Go to 50%, see if she'll do the flight level change. Fuel imbalance, huh? We're not set to bolt. Fuel imbalance, huh? Fuel quantity imbalance. There should be a bolt selector for that. I don't get it. 
Oh, no, 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 not off. All right, well, let's switch over there. And this thing's coming down, but not coming down fast enough. So let me do a flight level uh, vertical, vertical speed. Negative 300, 500. Yeah, that's fine. Come on. We're already at rats. That's weird. Denver's right there. ATC. Air traffic control is such a pain in the butt sometimes. Two nine nine two. Buckley Air Force Base is nice. Oh, damn you, air traffic control. Give it to me. Me to go to runway 25. Let's see if I can request a different runway. Really? All right, now they're giving us 25. They won't let us do 35. Right. Where's 25 coming at? All right, well, let's come down to here. Change our procedure. There's 25. Are gonna put us taking us to Gasty.
go back to Epple. Great. All right. At eight, nine, I think I have an approach. It does. Do they want 7,000 feet? All right. Thousand feet, flight level change. Damn you, you went off the, the track. the Maverick uh, livery to be the same Trying to get down. Bring it down to ILS all level. It doesn't look like we're gonna get ILS, so I'm gonna just discontinue the autopilot. Kill the engine. Put in some flaps. Make sure our flaps are working again. Yep. Flaps are working.
Oh, we're on the glide slope. We got our pappy lights. Little too forceful on the brakes, but we're down. We landed. Yeah, a little too much on the brakes. So the Mighty Mouse, the SR-22. So definitely a, a big jump up. Well, speed-wise from, let's say, a 172, right? So as I understand, this is more like a turboprop. Got the little um, turboprop exhaust. Yeah, so a nice plane, and I'm probably going to be flying it more. Especially for some cross countries. A little bit more speed, you know? Alright, let's try to solve this problem about... Do we have to be in the same plane to see each other? Which doesn't make much sense to me, but... Because when we do fly-ins, when we do fly-ins with the community, you can see everybody's got different planes. So I don't, I don't understand it, but we're going to put that theory to the test now. Uh, it shouldn't matter. It really, deliver. I don't know. But I do the fly-ins sometimes on Fridays. There'll be one later today, usually 1 p.m. or so. There's the F-14, 14s. Just change the pets. Oh, I love that 35, that's my favorite. That's the way a plane should fly. There's the F-18. I'll put us back on runway 25. And I'll be spawning on runway 25 here momentarily. And we'll find out once and for all what's going on. If we I don't I honestly don't believe we need to be in the same plane. So there's some setting off somewhere. see okay all these controls you gotta remember all right so they have the power over here I'm used to the f14 where those controls are over here the f18 it's over here. Military planes, man. 
crazy. Oh, maybe they took it off. I don't remember now. I remember there was a big difference between this one. They control it up on this. I think they did. Yeah, I see ya. So, if I remember right, this takes us to our autopilot screen. And this is relative altitude. Radar altitude. Nine. So it's got a set at nine. How do we change that again? The altitude. God, I forget. Let me try turning alt off and going higher. Heading is, I don't want heading on, and I don't want this on. Huh. All right. Both three. So that's strange that we actually do have to be in the same the same one I need to remember where all my controls are because I can't figure out how to do my heading or anything at the moment I don't remember anything how to do my waypoints how to do my headings the flaps are up flaps are up now gear got to make sure the gears up Where's the knob for altitude? Or there isn't in this one. I think it's just a fly and forget. You have you you need to be where you are and then punch it. Okay, turn off the autopilot. Oh. Off. So now, I'm not getting a disengage. I 
Let's see. There we go. Shift A, turn the autopilot off. Yeah. And there is a way to make this thing, there are ways to make these things do ILS landings at, uh, and use take an and uh, again, it's one of those, if you don't use it every day, you lose it. So I've been through the tutorials, at one point I knew how to use everything, I just don't remember. Oh, you're going down? Nice. Flying us back towards Colorado Springs now. We can land at uh, KCOS or we can land at uh, Butts Army Airfield. I do appreciate the military plans, how, you know. They're, they're very smart in some way, their ability to 
based on your speed and angles and flaps and you know it, it knows how to or even without messing with your flaps how it goes into its transitional modes I really wish they would. I mean, again, I'm so reluctant to go back to DCS World. It's one of those, you know, I want all that from Microsoft. I, <laughs> I don't want to support the Russians. Isn't DCS World like an entirely Russian thing? I thought it was. I could be wrong. I don't know who owns the rights to it and who's running it anymore these days. The last I heard, it was it's a Russian operation. The Dark Star. Yeah, what an amazing plane that is. Uh, all right, <laughs> I'll be landing. Ooh, pardon. I'll be landing at. Uh, Uh, KC F F. Let me double check over here to Sky Vector. KF. -F oh, KFC. Oops. That's it. KFCS. Not too far from here, it's just over this way a little bit. Well, sure. Yeah, if you don't have control of the dark star, even a small little course misstep would be hundreds of miles. Monument Hill, so KFCS is just over towards Cheyenne Mountain ahead of us. Takes another minute or two probably to get over there at this speed. There it is. There's the airfield right there. Okay.
There's 250 knots. Pick up speed brake gears. Flaps. power pulled off the power too much oh come on Gads, can't stick a landing to save me this week. Huh, you can only fly it in the Maverick mission. What plane did you want to see? Said the only way we could check it out is if, <coughs> if we were both on the ground <laughs> what aircraft oh, i'm back at denver <laughs> i'll get back to the <coughs> main menu i'll respawn afcs oh i see So you're in the dark star? Yeah, I'm not interested in doing a dark star flight. I'll load it to go in there. But no, I'm not really interested in doing one of those flights today. Getting up to Mach 10 is a pain in the ass. The physics behind it, it, I still don't fully understand it. I don't fully understand. I, I need to find somebody who's extremely good at physics to explain to me 
the takeoff procedure, and then you go inverted, and then you do a big dive, and then you, from the big dive, then you do a giant climb, which takes you to Mach 10, and... Oops. Damn it. I was supposed to spawn at KFCS. Yeah, so the physics behind the way you take off, the way you do your initial maneuvers, where you kick on your your ramjets, it's... I would love somebody to walk me through how all that works. And then, I'll under, then I would really understand how to mess with this thing as a... as a aircraft. Was it blowing it out? This sounds like 80s TV... 80s TV jazz music for any sort of a, uh, 80s television programming. Usually sitcoms or rom-coms. This would fit any one of those shows. Amazing though. I love these engines. Pretty amazing. Pretty slick. I wish they would have left the stickers on it from the movie so you can see the Lockheed, the Lockheed Skunk Works logos on it from the movie. All right, what are we going to fly now? I'm gonna get a vacuum and vacuum off this desk. Entirely too much ash and dust. This is on Yacht Rock, and this sounds like Black Sabbath. They need to curate this channel a little bit more. I love the Honda Jet. 
That is a fantastic aircraft right there. The Cirrus jet is nice. The Honda jet is badass. This was a free one that they gave us, the Pelican from Halo. They've been doing upgrades to that. I'm like, what do you need upgrades to that for? It's a... That's a toy. I really love the beaver. This is a this is a beautiful plane. Float version. They had this version basically in Microsoft Flight Simulator X. And what a joy to fly. And very I, I wish they would have given us one that that looked like it was brand new. Because the, in, the insides are so beautiful. Art Deco. I'm always thinking about how much I love you. I'm always thinking about all we want to do. Climb a mountain, walk in the trees. Feel the warmth of the summer breeze. The Bolo Copter, I love it. That's a neat little drone helicopter. It it flies so slow, but that's what it's for. It's not. This thing is not meant for flying fast. It's meant for flying around cities, and it's meant to be as super safe as possible. So, the Jenny. That's the Australian. Oh, the Curtis Jenny. Yep, barnstorming.
Well, hello, hello there, Hans. I like how these little planes, they were meant to land in fields like this and take off in fields like this. I don't mind slow rides. I don't mind flying low to the ground. In one of these, which would still be stupidly expensive today, which makes, again, it makes no sense. I mean, you're well, uh, you're in class G airspace. You can go anywhere. You don't even have to talk to air traffic control when you're in one of these, which that's nice. Because, you know, unless you, you really need to go high, which would then put you back in air traffic control space. Something like this would be, you know, fine. It's not a mixture. All the rocker arms, that's pretty awesome. Lost control over there. Pull back on the throttle too much. Full flaps.
if there's a mix anywhere. This is something. Let me pause this for a minute. I can't hear the engine. That was the mix. With this, is it a knob? Is it a pull? Is it a push? Am I twisting this? What is going on? It's moving. I can't tell what it's doing. That is so strange, but I'm pretty sure that's... Um, your batteries, the old, like, dry cell batteries. Nice. You do have to talk to Tower. Uh, da -da 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 -da. He feels so much more stable than your normal tail dragger. They have a tendency, and it could be some assists are on, but it has the wicked tendency on later model planes, monoplane, pride, uh, tail dragger configuration. They have this wicked torque pull on takeoff, and then they're really, they're really difficult to handle on landing now my mistake with this was being too forceful on a turn uh, again it's unfamiliarity with the how much uh, drag you induce with the flaps with this being a two winger Yeah, but when I do cross countries, I didn't promise a cross country glider. I but when I I do a cross country every every couple of weeks, and last week or the last one that I did was um, from Colorado out to California, and then up the coast of California to the north, and then back through uh, Utah. So I can start another cross country next week. We can go north. I've, uh, I haven't done north and south. But we're going to shoot for warmer weather, some places to fly. And maybe we'll probably go south. All right, let me try to do a landing. He does have nice control on the you use the rudder. You can keep her straight and level to fly a 
whole lot of rudder. He he turns really well. You you lose altitude, but you you do turn really really well. That whole turning on a dime is doing it. All right, let's do full flaps. Full rudder again. Try to get our tail around. Yeah, nice and stable. We're not getting a whole lot of fork pull. With the brakes, she's uh doesn't want to take the brakes. Yeah, it's like maybe the brake is set different for this one. I'm not really sure. Very nice. Fun. Uh, it'd be nice to just, again, Sunday cruise kind of plane. You know, you, you're not going anywhere fast. But it's very stable. And if you treat her like a lady, I'm sure you'll do just fine. I know these things are made to do great things as well, as far as, I mean, there was so many aerobatic people during the days that these were made. All right. Go back to the main menu, and um, you're flying the Shock Ultra now. All right. Let's do the Shock Ultra. Two minutes after the hour, it's noon here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Nice little plane too. I love the uh, I love the tires. Fun flying in high winds. Very fun flying in high winds. This is. This is one of those aircraft you can fly sideways. You can do all kinds of crazy things with high winds in this plane. So right away we noticed that the wings are in the uh, in a upswept position, and they're high mounted. I would really still want bigger shock. I would want some shocks on these things. I don't like rigid body. 
But I love those tires. Look at those tires. What rocks? Doesn't matter what kind of terrain you give me. But again, I would want some, uh, I would want some four wheel drive shock absorbers on these things. No, that's not gonna cut it for me. I mean, they're nice. But I want like some Baja racing 80 mile an hour. High desert shock. All right, looking around the cockpit, it's pretty minimalist. Her ability to take off in such a short area of space, again, makes her ideal for off-road flying. down baby need to get my view set for this that's a tough one let's go
thing. I love it with the uh, with full flaps. Your short takeoff ability is so fantastic. Got to be really careful about stalling, though. Very, very, very easy, easily stall. Not enough speed. Yeah, put it down. Get some speed and then go to full flaps. Catch the air. So try that. I mean, there's a couple of ways to take off. One, no flaps, so you build up a little bit of speed. And then at the last second, to get over that house, go to full flaps. Or turn around. Yeah, either way, it's, it's amazing the lift you can get. Or take off. For a short run with full flaps. Let's try full flaps again here. Always right on that edge of the stall with that thing. All right, so see if I can get a full flap takeoff before that house. Probably not, but I'm gonna try. Us. Maybe it, no. Or, oh, barely. A few more feet and I would have had it. You're going to need just a little bit more runway than that. But as soon as you get up over stall speed and enough speed to kick the flaps in and lift you, pretty freaking fantastic.
Well, I lost sight of you. I actually didn't see. What are you? How are the landings? Good. Are you sticking them in this thing? All right, so there's way over flap speed there. Now, full flaps. Look at that. Take the flaps back out. There's stall speed. Take the flaps out. Flaps. Full flaps. No flaps. Half lap. Put a little nose down. Try to stall. Go full flaps and see if we can kind of hover. Full flaps. Keep the nose up to right. Remain right on the edge of stalling. Come on. A little bit more nose down. So we're basically right on the edge of a stall and we're just full flaps and we're just spinning a circle. Let me try to put some more aileron in. Get us out of that strong turn. Put some rudder. Man, we're basically we're basically hovering, you know, not in as much as you can in an airplane. Trying to get the thing trimmed out here. Not really responding. I don't know if she does she have trim? That's a nose trim. That's interesting. But I don't have any ladder. I don't. I don't seem to have very strong rudder trim. There it goes. Nah. No real. Rudder aileron command trim wise, I think. Either way, nice. I mean, again, just right on the edge of a, right on the edge of a, a stall right there, just floating.
All right, just slowly pulling back on the power there. There's our runway. I want to see if I just kind of make her fall down. We're almost at a stall, full flaps. I've got like 10% power. I'm just trying to make it fall, really. I kind of want it to just fall like straight down as much as you can see if I can fall and make that runway before the end seems like it now I've got no throttle whatsoever it's full flaps Yeah, and slipping it tops everything, says uh, Henny. Yeah, pretty amazing. Let's see if we can get over to that monument I was going to show you the other day and then I crashed in the helicopter. It's just on that ridge over there where the marker is. I gotta look into my trim controls too because right now even though I am using it it doesn't seem to 
that might be one I'm gonna have to try to blow out and put back in again because it doesn't seem to hold what I want nor does this seem to go up and down it's trying to hold what are those 80 knots and hold that right there and I can't lock that in Try to build up a little speed and get over there. Just on the edge of that ridge ahead of us. Easy now. You're being crazy. Flowing way down again, putting full flaps, flowing back the power, and just floating over here to this monument.
Love it. She's watching heavenly stars and pictures change without you. More than real, it's true. Doors and breaches close behind you. What am I to do? Words and pictures change without you. More than real, it's true. Doors and breaches close behind you. Uh oh. Wasn't paying attention to speed again. Under stall. Full flaps. Very dangerous. How was I so fast? Um, I climbed out of that, and then as we got to like the top of a climb, I threw the nose forward and uh, came down into a descent, a slow descent, but yeah, it built my speed up. Oh, nice. The Broadmoor Golf Course. How awesome. I'm taking off with half power. Uh, I better be careful. Full flaps, half power. Not even going full takeoff and just letting her glide up. Pitch nose down in. Yeah, she's a pretty amazing aircraft. find yourself nearing that stall point get that nose down got to be better about that you're back at the Broadmoor golf course heading back that way This one, this is a good tune. Hello. 
Hold on. Hello. Yes. Hmm. All right, that sounds good. There's the Fort Carson military base right down below us. Reminds me of Pink Floyd. Remember when you were young, don't like the sun. Shine on, you crazy diamond. For a long time, my favorite German band used to be the Scorpions. Now, there's a band that kicked so much ass during the 80s. Just one of the best bands ever. They're guitarists. <laughs> Everything about them, Klaus Mein, what a great vocalist. That golf course is right there. All right, that was a nice view. Uh, a picnic lunch here at the golf course at the Broadmoor. 
There's a camping... There's a camping kit you can get. I didn't want to get it until 2024 because my gra my graphics... My graphics aren't so great at the ground level here. So I really want to wait till 2024, see what they come up with. And now the Unreal Engine is... I, I don't even know that they're going to use something like Unreal Engine. But there, there's this new graphic technology for Unreal Engine, like nanotechnology, that allows am amazing high detail graphics at in ground terrain. But anyway, in the uh, in the store, you can buy the camping kit, and it puts out a tent and I think sleeping bags and. I'm not even sure how much it is. Wait for the next sale. Exactly, just partying. What? A, that is definitely a... Unless you're a search and rescue kind of guy, that's definitely a party plane. All right, let's go to the marketplace. I've been camping here. Oh, cool. A, they've got a train. An old steam train. That's crazy what people have been asking for. They've been like, we want trains and we want amazing the stuff people want. Oh. That's cool. Okay, camping. Yeah, the Bush Plane Camp Out. Camp Out Utility. $14. An add-on for the simulator allows you to take camping equipment on board any aircraft, set up camp anywhere in the world you want to call home for a night or a week. It's not scenery. It's live and dynamic object placement and management. All via the an in-sim menu system. This unique add-on provides an opportunity to combine the serenity and beauty of flying with the peaceful vibes of camping. When you find that special spot in the world you want to make your own, you'll know exactly why flying is optional. Works with any aircraft built following current MF, uh, S, MSFS SDK standards optimized for Xbox. Pack, unpack button for quick management. That allows you to create, save, and, cust uh, and customize campouts per aircraft. Worldwide object persistence, meaning you could leave your camp there and come back to it. Wherever you put your camp, it's going to stay. Eco credit system to manage in sim littering. Intelligent purging system to protect sim performance. In sim management of complete product features. Over a dozen placeable objects, variations. Options when applicable. Includes Best Friend DLC pack with over 17 popular dog breeds to choose from. Includes the Winter DLC pack with over a dozen new objects for creating snowy scenes. Wind reactive objects include tents, portable windsock, and smoke canisters. Additional themed objects to be released. Oddly satisfying sound when placing objects. Custom sounds for key objects such as campfires. Share system allows you to share campouts with friends. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy it for Christmas. Put the camp out utility. That's nice. Here's another one. A bush plane. That's just... What is this one? Camp out airstrip. 42 BC bush plane. Private landing area in Red Bluff, California. 42 B bush plane camp out. Scenes have a small footprint versus complete sceneries that uh, cover a large area. That's what I was talking about, is uh, creating ground missions based on small scenery areas, right? So they're custom, so when you download it, or, uh, you know, um, let's say an Aztec temple, or um, just one small area where you need to do search and rescue, you have the ability to put tons and tons and tons of graphics, high-detail graphics in a small... 
package. If that makes any sense. Yep. Oh, uh, you can see, you can kind of look through these, see if they show the dogs in here. An axe, wood, and your chairs, your cooking, your cooler. They really need to highlight the animals. Really, and they didn't. Silly marketing people. Don't you know you always highlight the animals? Look at the animals in here. You can barely make them out in the picture. But there's a German Shepherd and there's a Dalmatian. Silly marketing people. Always, always, always put the animals up front. People go crazy. You're going to Lukla? Congratulations. Good luck with that one. Now that, that's a that's a crazy crazy airstrip. Well, up near the Himalayas. It's one of the landing challenges in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's turn this off. And go to new releases see what's going on that is interesting steam trains I heard uh, these guys released their own Tomcat and I guess it's pretty badass they're f14 look at this bad boy uh, no hurry to pick it up but it'd be interesting to fly the Antonov I can't believe how big that thing is Cockpit flashlight complete. And it looks like almost different, all different color LCD lighting. Only $2.49. Cockpit flashlight complete edition. This package is the opportunity you've been missing to acquire all the customized flashlights from Aerosphere at an unbeatable price. Add a touch of personality to your cockpit with these flashlights in carefully chosen colors. Designed with all the care just for you. You can only use one flashlight at a time. It's necessary to install oh, only one of the package options through the content manager. Ah. Uh, not that big of a deal to me. Oops. San Diego waterfront. Oh, nice. Looks like a fun little plane here. Reminds me of James Bond. Didn't James Bond fly that in uh, one of the movies? I haven't tried the bullseye landing. I bet we could do that one. That doesn't seem too, I mean, yeah. It doesn't seem too, too hard. We can land on a golf course. I'm sure we can land on that little, little pad. Might take some tries, but we would get it. No problem. I haven't actually found this place. Uh, it's in Antarctica or down south somewhere and when you load it you don't actually load into this place You load nearby and I think the thing is is the quest to find this 
Other way, Oceana's weird. Citation longitude enhanced. And it's free. But TBM 930 enhanced, free. A lot of good stuff out there all right we're nearing the one o'clock hour i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here for the day as always so we checked out the sr22 today we did a short little flight and crash with the f-18 we messed around with the curtis jenny that was a lot of fun and we ended with the shock ultra which is what an amazing an amazing aircraft amazing amazing this is might be a busy weekend I can't say a hundred percent normally uh, we get together with friends on Saturdays and we haven't been lately because of uh, oh, schedules so I need to play tomorrow by ear. I can't say, yes, I'll be here. I'll do my best to be here. But again, plans might change tomorrow. Well, what a perfect time for the, the simulator to crash. So thank you for tuning in today. Gentlemen, as always, I want to thank you so much for stopping in to the show and flying with me it's nice to see your airplanes fly by not what I'm trying to land though <laughs> I'm having enough hard time with my landings lately But if I don't see you guys this weekend, you have a great weekend. If I do see you, all right, I'll see you. He like said it's coming up on Christmas time. What do we got now? The 15th. You guys got vacation coming up. Hopefully all your tests and everything else is going well. Get all your presentations done. Ace it all. Kick butt. If you can fly. You can do anything, I think. All right, we will uh, maybe see you tomorrow, if not, um, Monday. We'll uh, plan a southern cross country. We'll go seeking out some warmer weathers and then try to do some gliding while we're at it. See how much money we can make next week. This week, we didn't make much money at all. Not at all. <laughs> 